concentration. When you woke up this morning, did you purposely say, I'm going to confine myself to a box? Or do you just avoid putting any conscious thought into today? When you're busy going at it, literally or figuratively, do you ever find yourself pausing for a moment to realize what's going on? Or are you just reacting? When you hear the saying, may I have your attention please, do you continue as you were, or do you consider the information you're about to receive might actually be valuable? When I was growing up, my mother used to ask me to do things, and sometimes her reasoning was, because I said so. Looking back, I wish perhaps I took the time to pause, think, and consider the ramifications of my choices. Good Thursday to you. Today is Thursday, October 20th, 2016. This is episode number 29 of Pause, Think, Consider. Thanks for tuning in today. For those of you that are a part of our Facebook page, we'd appreciate to go in parallel with today's topic for you to. Post a photo of you and your crew or squad or circle or group enjoying each other's company. I'll post one on the Facebook page as an example, but it would be great to have a list a wide variety of different people showcasing how they prefer to spend time with the people closest to them. Today's topic is on the necessity for fellowship. For more information on this topic, you can go to pausethinkconsider.com slash fellowship. Fellowship often has a religious-type correlation to it. It's not often or common to be brought up in general conversation. Instead, words like hanging out, a get-together, group activities. Those are much more common than fellowship. But what I appreciate about the word fellowship is it really signifies that it's much more than just a get-together. A get-together feels very informal, feels very loose, feels like there's not much purpose to it. And not that Spending time with other people needs to be purpose-driven, at least on the surface. But I do think the word fellowship embodies a lot more of the attributes that I want to talk about and suggest and believe is important for all of us to experience on a regular basis. So I want to talk about fellowship, what it means, the importance of it, and how can we ensure that we stick to a regular cadence of having fellowship. Fellowship can come in all different forms. It could be with just an individual. It could be with just a few individuals, a small group. Or it could be a stadium full of people. 
generally speaking, at least one, ideally two to five other people. You want to have a nice range so that you can have multiple conversations and group conversations all at the same time. If it's just one person and the conversation breaks down, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be challenging to pick up and continue moving forward. However, if there's, say, four or five individuals of the total group, generally speaking, you want it to be an even number. So everybody has essentially a partner that they can talk to, but then it's a small enough group that you can still circle back together and have the entire group join in a conversation versus a 20-person group that almost has to be broken down into two and the two sets of 10 or five sets of two. And so you can see it really starts with a numbers game, having the right numbers in order to get the real benefit from having fellowship. And it's interesting because there's an individual that uses this word quite frequently. And he's almost mocked to a certain degree. I think it's because it's not commonly used in the area. And maybe it's the manner in which he describes it. Or the manner in which you experience having fellowship with this individual. But I believe the principle behind it and his intentions, at least on the surface, are valid and good and in the right direction. So the definition of fellowship that I personally use is a, an, an intentional gathering of friends. An intentional gathering of friends, ideally with an even number that is no more than six individuals. While six isn't a perfect number in the mathematical sense, it allows you to have the smallest group with the most number of possibilities. Again, if you go to an odd number, potentially one person could be left out, or now you're having three people try and talk to each other. And that can be challenging. But the great thing about six individuals, and why I think it's perfect, is you can have three different two-person conversations, two different three-person conversations, or the group is small enough that around the table, all six people can join in. It gives that extra wrinkle that four people doesn't provide. Just a few more individuals. And the key part with the intentional piece is, as I opened and discussed with a get-together, while it's very informal and feels less serious than the word fellowship, it also doesn't feel purpose-driven. And I believe fellowship is purpose-driven and a necessity. 
it's a necessity from the standpoint it allows you to get outside of the normal daily day in day out minutia that you personally experience that's why it's so popular and so prevalent for couples to have regular date night i know not every couple is this fortunate it's definitely something that i plan to institute with jean when we're finally in the same town but having regular date night, something my parents do. I mentioned before on the program, I used to go to my grandparents every weekend. It's Saturday night, even when we stopped going to my grandparents. Saturday night was always date night. Always, every Saturday night, date night. Sunday morning would be family breakfast, but Saturday night, date night. They didn't always do anything extravagant, but at the very minimum, they went out to eat together. Just the two of them. As I've gotten older and I've seen my parents less, I've crashed date night a little bit. But they've held too. And it's very intentional. And that's the same thing that I'm suggesting. Fellowship but with a group of your friends, your acquaintances, your circle, the people you admire, the people that you look up to, your mentors, however you want to frame it. And the importance of it is because it helps refresh, renew, reinvigorate you to take on and tackle and perform the rest of the time you're away from them. My circle is composed of primarily older than myself, the closest person in age, a couple years. I have people in my main circle that are 10 years or more older than me. And we talk on a regular, almost daily basis. Their lifestyle, very different than mine. Very different stage. Having, in some cases, teenagers. Others having young children. And when we get together, I can visibly see their ability to block out and be in the moment and the good and the effect that it has for them. There is, of course, human nature, that reaction when things start to wrap up, that reality sets in. My father so often, whenever we'd go on two-week vacations, Sunday was the roughest day for him. Saturday started, Saturday night started a little bit because the realization came that just the messed up thing about our society and our work environment and the great thing about European work environments is just how much extra time they have, how much extra time they have for to refresh and renew versus the American workforce. Some individuals, they get 10, 10 days we'll add in some corporate holidays. So we're talking about have 365 days. There's 250 work days. And you're working, busting your ass for 20 20 of those 250 days off. You better love your job and you better love the people that you're around. And for so many people, they don't. 20 is a great, a, a pretty, I wouldn't say great. 
and appreciate more. But for some people, they get less. If you're working part-time or you're a contract, you get none. You take a day off, that is money coming out of your pockets. And if you don't have a lifestyle that supports that type of working arrangement, you can't afford to take days off. That's why having your lifestyle in correlation to and in alignment with the vocation, advocation, career that you take on is so important. And the stress that weighs down of all of the different things that we do, all of the different things we do. To have time that you can escape everything, even if it's just for 30 minutes, just for coffee, it provides that jolt. It provides that light at the end of the tunnel. It gives individuals something to look forward to. And then in the moment, be able to completely forget about those responsibilities. And it's imperative. It's imperative. It is an absolute must. The challenge can be, based on your situation, whether or not you have people on a regular basis that you can do that. I know for myself, the challenge very often can be because of the lifestyle difference between myself and a lot of the people in my circle. It doesn't happen. It goes in waves. It goes in waves where I'll see some of those individuals over the course of a couple months 30 times. The only people that I see more the people that I work with, my coworkers. I don't even see my family that many times. So it becomes almost an extension of your family without being your family. That's why I believe groups like Amway and the multi-level marketing groups are so popular because they they provide that environment, they provide that fellowship, they provide that group setting that on a regular basis you are gathering and enjoying each other's company. Some of these are very purpose driven. I look at Meetup as a Potentially pseudo fellowship opportunities. Much more directed in terms of the purpose. I'm not suggesting that. Meetups are great. I've done them personally. You can learn a tremendous amount. Great for personal development, networking, learning new skills, meeting new people. But it's not great for trying to create what I'm looking for through fellowship, which is to have a conscious, active renewal. That's not to say you can't experience that through a meetup group. But we're talking about specific friend individuals that you're able to lose track of time 
and enjoy each other's company. The importance of it is simple. It's to allow you to prepare and renew to take on everything else that goes on in life. Because we only get 20 days out of 250. And so you have to take advantage of other moments. Whether that be on weekends. Weekends can be tough. But short weekend trips. Guys weekend. Girls weekends. We're not talking with the family. It's doing it with your group of friends. Maybe it's doing happy hours, after work activities. And less focus on the actual activity, more on just spending time together. You know, for a lot of people, they feel like they have to do something together. Let's go do something. I think less is more. Sometimes even going to a bar might be too much. It's just the ambiance is, is wrong for the situation. It's hard to talk. It's hard to engage. My personal favorite is going and grabbing a bite together. We can yak for hours. And then inevitably, one of my buddies checks their watch, realizes they got to get home to the missus, and it's back to life, back to reality. But the positive impact it makes on your psyche is one that can't be replicated elsewhere. You know, for a lot of people are very family driven, very family oriented. I consider myself one. Not the best family family member in the world. Average to maybe above average if I use some truth serum. But it's different than that. I think a lot of people agree. It's different to go visit the in-laws or to have family celebrations for holidays versus doing the exact same thing with a group of friends. A lot of people consider their friends their family. It's either they don't have a family. But even that, it, it's, still, it's still different. And that difference is the exact importance in the fellowship. My personal suggestion is it should occur at least once a week, ideally. It can be a huge challenge. So I would say at a minimum, at a minimum, I would love to say every two weeks, but at a minimum, a month, once a month. If you can't do it once a month, 12 times a year that you get together for two, maybe three hours because you're attempting to lose track of time, not really setting a time frame, a good two, three hours, that's losing track of time. And by doing that, setting that minimum, it's not only if you're going through a rough month, a rough week, a rough day, gives you a light at the end of the tunnel, allows you to see that while you're going through the shit right now, you know that you've got your buddies there for you. Your girl's there for you. 
coming up on X Day. And it's important to be in the moment when you're there. To push aside whatever else you've got going on. So in the planning stages of fellowship, you got to make sure you set the ground rules. Make sure you know that there will be no distractions. Things happen. You got to stay in contact with people for emergency purposes, but be there in the moment. That's the most important thing right then and there. If you can do that, your psyche, your morale, your mental focus is going to grow exponentially. It's going to provide and allow you the ability to be at your best as often as possible. The more often, the more frequent you can engage in fellowship, the more likely you are to sustain positive, forward-moving momentum and focus on your other responsibilities, like your family, your job, any other extracurricular activity. We all need friends. We all need friends. And if you don't have any, or they're limited, or they're bad, bad influences, or just not reliable, go find people. Get out there in the public. Find ways to identify with people. And build those groups to allow you to have fellowship really whenever you need it. If you're feeling down, if you're really struggling getting through some work projects, other projects, that's a perfect time. Call up that friend and say, hey, let's go to lunch. Let's go do a happy hour. Maybe there's a little bit of event session, but after that, see where things go. Talk about some topics that you haven't been vetting to your family and to your colleagues for the past few weeks. Get away from it. And if we can all do that, if we can all commit to having some sort of fellowship type event, ideally, once every couple weeks, at a minimum once a month, We're going to see a natural progression in our performance in all aspects of life. I want to thank you all for tuning in and listening today. Please go check out the website at pausedandconsidered.com slash fellowship. And don't forget to go onto our Facebook page. And please post an image of you engaging in some fellowship with your group. I look forward to talking to you all tomorrow on Pause, Think, Consider.